Hey there folks, I'm Eric Osberg and this is The Outdoor Report. Thanks for tuning in. This episode is all about Ottertail County. Positioned in west central Minnesota, Ottertail County has over a thousand lakes. Now they're not all fishable, but to prove a point, if you visited a new lake once a week, it would take you 20 years to see them all. So today we're gonna show you why many consider Ottertail County a panfish paradise. Matthew Parker will tell us how he approaches crappies in open water, Garrett Spear will show us how it's done on the ice, and we'll follow the Minnesota DNR as they try to keep the fisheries healthy. Plus, we've got a builder's tip and a savory goodness segment coming right up here on the Outdoor Report. The Outdoor Report is brought to you by Firebrand, the hottest brand on the ice. Northview Bank, you find it, we'll finance it. Little Falls Tourism, where the Mississippi pauses, discovery begins. Smoothie's Sunflower Oil and Chef Robert's Gourmet Breading Mix. Brainerd International Raceway, Lakes Jam. Power Lodge, Ranger Boats and Evanroo. Ottertail Lakes Country, Yamaha Generators, Revs Your Heart. Crossings by Grand Stay Hotel in Parker's Prairie, Minnesota. Catch Cover Hard-Nosed Fish House Products and JT Custom Rods. <laughs> This story begins in late May. However, the lessons learned can help year round. So what we're doing today is we're with Matt Parker and we are sight fishing crappies in shallow water. We're somewhere in Ottertail County. We're not gonna tell you where. You gotta find your own inner otter. But these crappies are up in the shallows right now and we're using big long rods and we're basically just cruising these, these reeds and looking in for dark shadows, and those are usually the crappies. He's gonna come get it. You see that? Oh, yeah. We're using plastics on 1 16th ounce jigs. Matt says the key to success is staying above the fish. He also says don't spend too much time trying to get a particular fish to bite. There's really no coaxing them into biting. Like this one just ran after the bait, like that one chased after the bait for about 15 yards. Right. Never even really got that close to it, but so the bottom line is when you're out doing this, it's not, you don't want to just sit and toy with the same fish. They're either going to bite it or just move on. Another thing to keep in mind is these fish are very vulnerable. Too much of a good thing could damage the fishery. One of the things that I'll say, and I say it a lot to people, is just because you can catch a limit of fish doesn't mean you should kill a limit of fish. Average size fish so far today has just been incredible. I'm gonna mix it up and put on a little boot tail. Oh, there you go. That's <laughs> the fun part, swinging them up. That's crazy. See, and the crazy thing is, Matt, is I, I have never done this before, and I'm not a really good fisherman, but you catch on to it pretty quick. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It's a good thing to do, take your kids. Just go and get a simple pair of eye gogs for 15 bucks that got some polarization. Get your kids out here, you hunt them down, whether or not they hold the rod or not, it doesn't really matter because they, they're involved, they get to see them, and, and seeing those crappies rush out like that is really, really, really a good time. Got to wrestle them out of there. There we go. That's, that's a beast. That's a big one right there. That boy. is a beast. I'm not going to swing that one. I'll break my break my line off on that one. There we go. Yeah, that's what we're here for. Right here. Springtime. Crappie fishing like this. Can't beat it. Look at that fish, huh? Ottertail County's probably got 100 lakes that got crappies like this in it get on the DNR website to the lake finder and do a little searching around and look for the look for some gill nets that got some crappies in them and uh, all you really got to do to find them is just start up the big motor and just drive around and look for the look for the reed beds like this ooh there's one there's a nice one right there double doubles doubles they're raining it's raining crappies there <laughs> here they come <laughs> It's always fun when you got these long rods trying to manage oh. them. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, well, there's just a. I think I have too much line out here. Yeah. I'll come. This I, I'm left-handed. Maybe that's maybe the problem. These fish, though, you know, look at the build on them. They're just, they're just wide. And like I said earlier, there's so many lakes in Otter Tail County that got just big, giant panfish. <laughs> Coming up after the break, we'll show you how scouting in the spring can pay dividends in the summer here in Panfish Paradise. The Outdoor Report is brought to you by Firebrand Fish Houses and Northview Bank. Fish houses aren't just for ice fishing anymore. There's a reason to own one year round. Firebrand features a durable lightweight aluminum frame and all the comforts of home. Whether you're camping, hunting, or ice fishing, Firebrand has a model to fit the entire family. Firebrand, the hottest brand on the ice. Thanks for bringing us to your cabin. It's so beautiful and what a cute dog. Yeah, I love this place. <laughs> We better get out of here. Hey, what are you doing on my property? What's with the neighbor's dog? Need your own vacation property? You find it, we'll finance it. Northview Bank, northviewbank.com. In the heart of Minnesota exists a place overflowing with discovery. Whether you're biking the trails, wetting a line, or just soaking it all in, Little Falls is the perfect getaway. Tradition abounds in historic downtown and at the Minnesota Fishing Museum. Little Falls, where the Mississippi pauses, discovery begins. The Outdoor Report is brought to you by Little Falls Tourism, Lakes Jam, and Brainerd International Raceway. We're somewhere in Ottertail County catching slab crappies with Matthew Parker. It's almost June and the crappies are in the reeds. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Came in out of nowhere. That is another dark one. I'll, I'll match your, ooh, I was gonna match your dark one there. I've been on a lot of fishing trips, Matt. Uh-huh. And none of them have been extreme. Yep. And you know what I mean? This isn't extreme, right? I mean, no, it's it, as easy as it gets. Right. It, Bring your grandpa out. Right, right. Yeah. Right. And just to see it, I mean, that's just, I mean. That's what turns me on about it so much. It's so visual. Even if you were like sitting in the back of the boat eating a sandwich, watching yeah. this happen, yeah. it would be worth watching. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a good deal to get some little kids out on too, even if they're not managing a fishing rod because they're involved, right? If they, if they can start pointing it out and it helps them develop some awareness of what things look like in the water, like I see one right there. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> And it's a nice one to boot. Oh yeah. Nice one. Whoa. Come here, doggy. Pull and drag. Yeah, that's a nice one, huh? That's 12. It's gotta be. Oh yeah, that's a big one. That is an outdoor report fish right there. Look at that. Big, healthy, juicy. We're gonna measure this one real quick. That's 13 and 
They're Every bit of 13, huh? 13 and a half, almost 14. Yeah. So that time I didn't see a fish, but as long as I'm standing here with a rod in my hand, I might as well throw it in. And so I just threw it in kind of blind and then all of a sudden, psh, out of nowhere, that uh, 13 and a half inch crappie came and hit it. Like I said, I've never done this before. And and I'm gonna do this again. I'm sorry, Matt, but I'm gonna do this again. Take your family. Take the family. Uh, we'll, we'll bring you too, right? You know, Eric, I, I, you know, you don't need me for this operation. No, we just need a big long rod. And can I tell you the good thing about it, Eric? What? You live in probably one of the best parts of the state to go make this happen in Otter Tail County. Yeah. Because you just go ahead and you pick a lake and this time of the year, you just uh, drive around and go look for them. Another reason Matt loves doing this so much is it helps him keep tabs on when the big bluegills are starting to move into the shallows. Look at that horse. Oh man, nothing gets my blood going like a big bluegill. Look at that thing. Oh man. Oh, look at that pretty thing. Boy, those are special fish when you get a big giant. I mean, I'm, I'm a big guy and that thing's gobbling up my whole hand. Look at that thing. Wow, what a giant. So you might be saying to yourself, this is great, Eric. But how does it apply to summer? Well, Matt has a theory. He believes the fish stay pretty close to home all year long and basically just transition from the reeds to the weeds. There's tons of fish around here. Let's see if we can get them to cooperate. In the spring of the year, they'll be in their spawn ground. After they're done spawning, they'll want to move off the deep weed line, be around be around the deep cabbage, deep coontail, and after once you get off the, uh, after they move off the deep weed line and start migrating out to the basin, if you get those three areas pretty close together, well, you can be uh, pretty confident that you're going to be staying around, staying around fish year round, just following that. There's a, there's there's the right one. There's the right one. There we go. You know, not a huge fish, but if you're looking for a supper, that 10 inch, 11 inch crappie's the ticket. Matt's technique during midsummer is basically trolling. He still uses a jig and plastic. Even though I'm not fishing a cork today, I like to put on a little bobber stopper. And right now I got this set at about eight foot. So then when I cast out, make that short cast behind the boat, I can keep an eye on my bobber stopper to let me know roughly where my bait is in the water column. He uses short casts and then just drags the jig above the fish at 0.4 or 0.5 miles per hour. This is a technique that my dad would use all the time. Growing up, we'd go out and throw a little jig in a piece of plastic, sometimes tip it with live bait out behind the boat and, and uh, cruise around pretty slow. Six of these fish seven maybe tops and you got a good meal. No reason to keep 30 of them. So if you're looking for crappies, try to identify spawning grounds and start your search there. The fish shouldn't be too far away no matter what time of year. And more than likely, they're relating to the wheat. Coming up after the break, we're gonna spend some time with the DNR and find out more about the lakes in Otter Tail County. The Outdoor Report is brought to you by Northview Bank and JT Custom Rods. This land is beautiful. I'm sure it's great for hunting. Yep, there's a few really nice bucks around here. This would be a nice place to build a house. Oh, I just come out here to hunt and get away from it all. Hey, you're on my property. Can't you see the sign? Run! What? I thought this was your land. Need your own land? You find it, we'll finance it. Northview Bank. Northviewbank.com. Are you looking to up your game? Then get your hands on the new JTX Mag from JT Custom Rods. A cutting edge carbon fiber blank and nickel titanium alloy guides give you the edge. It's the most sensitive and responsive rod money can buy. Go to JTODP.com, enter the Outdoor Report promo code and get 5% off your entire order. JT Custom Rods, redefining fishing. 
From big waters to the shallows and the whole outdoors, the aluminum rig you've always wanted is here. Packed with features, now you can enjoy the legendary ride, quality, stability, and peace of mind from Ranger. Coupled with Evinrude E-Tech's unrivaled performance and 300 hours with no dealer schedule maintenance, every Ranger aluminum boat is engineered to excel and priced to be yours. Power your Ranger with Evinrude E-Tech. We as avid waterfowl hunters can never get enough storage. Whether we are traveling to our favorite hunting shack or nearby honey hole, bringing the right equipment is critical to the success and safety of our hunt. Excel Outdoors provides trailer accessories that meet our needs. Cargo trunks and cargo racks keeps all of our gear really dry and easily accessible. Excel Outdoors, organize your life outside. Hey, you with the cell phone, look up here for a second. As long as you got that thing in your hand, use it. Go to the Facebook or the Twitter or the YouTube and look us up. We know your phone is important to you and believe me, it's important to us too. But we want this show to be as interactive as humanly possible. So if you see a hashtag on your screen, use it. Or go to our Facebook page and post a picture there. Use the hashtag Outdoor Report Fish and we'll repost our favorites. Hope you like the rest of the show. The Outdoor Report is brought to you by Power Lodge, Ranger Boats, and Evan Rood. Starting with bluegills. Howard Fullhart is the Assistant Area Fisheries Supervisor for the Minnesota DNR office in Fergus Falls. It's basically unlimited opportunity in Otter Tail County. I mean, we've got uh, just, we've got more lakes per square mile than almost anywhere else in, in the state of Minnesota. We joined Howard and his crew as they surveyed one of the lakes in Otter Tail County. So we've got some of our dominant lakes that are, you know, our walleye fishing, but the majority of our lakes are panfish lakes. They're uh, bass panfish lakes. So we've, opportunity is abound in Otter Tail County. Their objective is to monitor not only the numbers of fish, but to document growth rates and make sure the resources aren't being harmed. We've got very healthy lakes when it comes to our fish populations and, and very diverse fish communities. A lot of that is the people that we have here too and, and being consistent with, you know, not taking too many fish or taking what you need for a meal and then, you know, leaving the rest for somebody else or for another opportunity or another day too, so. One species that is very susceptible to overfishing is bluegills, especially when it comes to big bluegills. In order to, to have lakes that produce big bluegills or big sunfish, you need those lakes, you need big bluegills in there. Bluegills have long lifespans and a relatively slow growth rate. We basically say a bluegill is an inch a year. So you catch a nine, 10 inch bluegill, that's a 10 year old fish. A bluegill or a panfish, they can actually live out to 15 to even 20 years old in, in some systems. Not only are genetics important when it comes to producing trophy sized bluegills, competition plays a role as well. Howard says without big bluegills in the system, smaller fish start putting energy into reproduction rather than growth at an earlier age. That's what happens in these stunted populations is you've had all these big fish removed out of there and now all of a sudden you've just got all these small fish and it's almost impossible to turn that cycle back around. The individuals that used to need to keep a limit of, of the great big bluegills all the time are starting to realize too in, in, in order to keep those big bluegills around, uh, you, you need to let some of those bigger ones go and then you want to keep those, like I said, those you know those seven and eight inch bluegills and uh, they make as good of a meal as, as those big ones do too. So, Hopefully, if we all take a conservative approach and selectively harvest, an increase in fishing pressure won't have a negative impact. We've got all these lakes and if we keep them spread out, I mean, uh, everyone can enjoy them and have that peaceful time that you, you know, out in the water and, and just enjoy your time in, in our area, in Otter Tail County. One of our favorite things about this part of Minnesota is the pace of life. Quaint communities like Henning, Battle Lake, and the city of Otter Tail offer residents a chance to enjoy country living in the heart of lakes country and still have a short, scenic commute to work. To learn more about opportunities to not only play in Otter Tail County, but to live and work there too, visit tricityliving.org. It's time now for some savory goodness. Brought to you by Smoothie's Oil and Chef Robert's Breading. We're gonna do something a little bit different today. We're actually gonna bake our fish in an oven 
And joining me is my lovely daughter and lovely assistant, Anna. Say hi, Anna. Hi. We've got some crappies. We've got our Chef Robert's Gourmet Breading Mix, and we've got our Smoothie Sunflower Oil. So what's the first thing we need to do, Anna? Preheat the oven to 500 degrees. All right, very good. Now, while the oven is warming up, you coat the fillets in your Smoothie Sunflower Oil, then you roll in the Chef Robert's Breading Mix. Arrange them in a lightly oiled baking dish and put them in the oven for 10 minutes. You don't need to cover or turn the fish. The really good news is if you forget how to do this, the recipe is right on the back of the package of the Chef Robert's Breading Mix. That looks like savory goodness. The Outdoor Report is brought to you by Yamaha Generators and Ottertail Lakes Country. One outdoor power that's super lightweight and ultra quiet with world-class dependability and quality? Then you should check out the new Yamaha EF2000 ISV2. The I stands for inverter, which means it puts out the cleanest power you can get to safely operate today's sensitive electronics. The V2 means it's a whole new generation. Hey everyone, it's me, the Inner Otter. Everybody knows Ottertail County, Minnesota is a great place to stay, play, and dine. But did you know there are a lot of great opportunities to live and work here too? Here's an Otter one just for you. Live in the heart of Ottertail County, Minnesota. The cities of Battle Lake, Ottertail, and Henning offer you quality of life affordable housing, and jobs. For more information or to find your inner otter, visit ottertaillakescountry.com. When it comes to our precious lakes and rivers, the fight to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species is the struggle of our generation. And we all need to be involved, from anglers, to hunters, to recreational users, and anyone who loves our lakes. To find out how you can do your part to prevent the spread of AIS, visit the online home of Changing Minnesota Traditions at minnesotatraditions.com. The Outdoor Report is brought to you by Crossings by Grand Stay Hotel in Parker's Prairie, Minnesota. Hey there folks, I'm Eric Osberg. Welcome back to The Outdoor Report. Today we bring to you a new segment called Builder's Tips, brought to you by our friends at Firebrand and Catch Cover. This is for all of you do-it-yourselfers out there. If you're in the market for a new fish house, you got a few choices you gotta make. Like, am I gonna buy new? Am I gonna buy used? Am I gonna build my own? Or am I gonna pay a professional to do it? As for me and mine, I'm not much of a do-it-yourselfer, so I let my friends at Firebrand finish our fish house. But we are going to show you some tricks and some tips, some do's and some don'ts, to make your next fish house project that much better. Right now, we're cutting out the floor for an eight by 16. And as you can see, we have a template all made up. So we just set the template on top of the rubber. And as you can see, Steve there, he's cutting the rubber, following the template around. We can go right in the house. Right now, we're ready to start putting down the glue. He's got the rubber flooring folded back over. So do one half at a time. For the adhesive, we use the indoor outdoor carpet glue. Obviously, it's meant to be outside and resist the, the outdoor elements. Now that we've got that half of the glue laid, they'll roll the rubber on top of that and then flip up the other side and do the same thing on the other half of the house. There you have it. That's how we install the rubber floor in the Firebrand fish houses. Speaking of ice fishing, Ottertail County is a fantastic place to hit the hard water. Nice to go. We joined Garrett Sphere of Slab Seeker Fishing late last year to find out his approach to pan fishing through the ice and to find out what makes this one of his favorite places to be. As far as chasing big trophy caliber panfish, Ottertail County I think is the, the biggest stronghold in Minnesota. There's just so much water up here and there's so many gems. You can really spread out the pressure and it's not like everybody's taking fish from one body of water. And the big thing is, is when we hunt big trophy gills like this, we gotta let those big males go. Um, with bluegills, a lot of it is genetic. And if you take too many males, which pass on their genetics, out of a population, you can do irreversible damage to a lake. But kind of my rule is we kind of have a nine inch slot limit. Anything nine inches or over goes back. 
anything under nine inches or nine inches we can keep and, and cut off. But, you know, especially those fish that are 10, 11 inches, those are really important to let those fish go. I'm a plastics guy, but this midwinter bite when these bluegills are off a little bit, you're gonna get a lot of bites in these year larvae. They actually have a scent sack in the back of the worm and puncturing that little scent sack back there gets a whole bunch of scent in the water. You wanna keep them alive on the hook, so what you wanna do is you wanna grab them, roll them in your fingers, and then hook them through that blunt end. Just like in the open water, Garrett concentrates on weeds to find the fish. That's a nice bluegill. It's about nine inches. Big perky one. We've got a cabbage patch right behind us that comes right up to the surface. We're sitting out here on a main lake hump and this cabbage is literally coming up right to the surface behind us. And there's a little depression here where it goes down to about eight feet of water. What'll happen is, is these panfish, both crappies and bluegills will go down and sit in that depression to get away from the pike. It feels like a pretty good fish here. Another fun part about coming out here and fishing some of these shallow cabbage and coontail beds for bluegills is that you pick up some of these nice crappies too. There we go. That's an outdoor report fish, baby. Otter tail county. Woohoo! It's a 15 inch crappie right there. We did it! We pulled it out at the buzzer. Wow. It's about a 15 inch crappie. It's a really nice fish. We kind of struggled a little bit to get big fish. We had a lot of action today. But we put it together at the end and got to show everybody a big Otter Tail County panfish. I think I found my inner otter in Otter Tail County with this one. So what did we learn? What's the moral of the story? Well, if you're into panfish or walleyes or bass or muskies for that matter, Ottertail County is the place to be. There's plenty of lakes to choose from. Just remember to practice selective harvesting and don't forget, it's not about having time, it's about making time. I'm Eric Osberg with your Outdoor Report. <laughs>